a little bit more. Let's put lots in there for good measure. There we go. Oh yeah, we did. And then we'll shove it in. Good afternoon. How are you doing today? Welcome to Life with Bilsif. I'm your host, friggin' Bilsif. I've been busy around here. Big time. So I figured I'd bring you along. I was going to wait until this is done. But I said, nah, I'll bring you along now so I can kind of show you what's going on. I've been working on this area of my yard right here. I'm going to be putting in a pond, as you know. So I had to rewire the gazebo. So the wire's out of the way because the pond's going to go in here somewhere. So I got that all rewired. I got my 12 volt system rewired. I've got an outdoor plug installed. I've got my 12 volt from the solar panel box installed. So I can run all the lights for the pond with the 12 volt. But right now what I'm doing is I'm playing with, I build my own biological filter for the pond. It's still gonna cost you a couple hundred bucks probably. It's better than spending five or 600 bucks on one. So. What I use is a 55 gallon drum. I get myself a few fittings from, you know, the pool store. So we got a drain backwash plug down there. We got a output shaft that goes to the waterfall on this side. This is the inlet side I'm just working on tonight. And I figured I better fire up the camera and show you this. So I use milk crates. And as you can see, I got the tube in there and down. I fill the first layer with lava rock. Then I get a screen that goes on top of this, and then I go like a pea stone, and then I put another, oh, fuck, it's covered in dirt. I put another one of these on top, and then we go fabric. I built one years ago, and I'll tell you, it worked pretty damn good. So I'm gonna build another one and go from there. So what I'm out here right now for is actually just come out. It's been raining, so I haven't been able to do much, but just come out for a measurement from here down to the ground for the pump. And I'm gonna see, safely, we're gonna go about 26. Yeah, so let's go cut ourselves a piece of 26. I am 145 short of a full load, Jim. But I'll show you my valve system. What do you say it was? 26? 10-4. Don't let me forget that. 26. I finally have a company coming in to uh, put the plumbing in for the basement bathroom. So don't worry, I haven't forgot about that. So this is the valve system where the pumps are gonna come into. This is gonna be my primary. So I can open the pump and I can shut it if I shut the pump off and I don't want it to suck the barrel dry, it can shut it off. So primary pump's gonna come in here. I'm gonna have another one of these valves over here for a secondary pump when I want, when I have friends over and I want a little bit more water flowing. We're gonna have two separate pumps, so I don't kill myself with a hydro bill. I picked up myself up one of these pumps on Amazon. It's a, uh, it's not an expensive pump, but it's a 2,700 gallon per hour pump. 120 watts from that. So that's not bad if it's accurate. There's a box right there. You can get all different sizes. You can get up to a 9,000. 9,000 gallons per hour, but it's 620 watts. So if I get two, three, like 2700s at 120 watts, then I have one for just keeping the pond clean, and I have one for when I want more than one. So it's a decent, not a big, decent looking pump. It's got some weight to it. There it is right there. There's a pump. We picked that up. And it was inexpensive. I think it was a hundred and some dollars. And then I was at our local friggin' greenhouse deal and I got myself the 1800 power clear UV light. I got it for a hundred bucks because it was missing the screws that hold the box on. It's regularly about 280 Canadian dollars. So you know, about 50 cents American. That's not bad. So anyways, there's my valves for here. That's the valves for the input side. And I'll have another one of these, same as this one right here. Captain. This here is for my backwash I'm working on. And this will be at the bottom of the barrel. 
to backwash the pond or the biofilter when it's really super dirty. Oh god. Or if you want to drain it. You need some way to drain it, so this is how I'm gonna drain it. So there you go. That will go on the bottom this way actually, and then I'll just hose hose it to where I want to go and when I want to wash it out. I just crack that open and whew, she gives her captain. So that's that. So what I come in here for is 26 inches, Jim. Come down here, I'm near the old Chevy doing this so I make sure I scratch shit, eh? So 20. Six inches, which is right there. The good thing about building stuff like this is it's fun as hell, and it doesn't have to be exact. So if, say you're building 26 inches. If it's 26 and an eighth, it don't really matter. You know what I mean? As long as it's close, Captain. Now, easy now. What in the F? I haven't had that problem yet, but all of a sudden, the blade wants to be too short. I've already cut four without a bounce, but whatever, it's cut. Let's go out and slap this on before the rain comes. There's more rain coming, I think. We just had a pile of friggin' rain. It started raining at four to about five, and it filled that pail, and it was overflowing for 20 minutes. Look at it. Filled right to the brim. And that's only off of a, a roof from there to there, and I have another downspout over there, so that was a lot of rain. Plus, we've got puddles back there. So we'll get our little scuff pad. We'll give her a scuff -a -roo. Very good. We'll give her another scuff -a -roo, which I think I already did, but we'll do it again anyway, in case I missed it. We'll get the primer in there. See that? See the primer? Good. How you doing? Primer away. Count them. A little bit more. Let's put lots in there for good measure. There we go. Oh, yeah, we did. And then we'll shove it in. Oh, yeah. Perfect. So there we go. So now I just need another 45 down there. What? What? So now we just need another 45 down there. And then I'll be able to put my valves here. And where the pond goes, we can run the lines right into her. Another really cool thing about this idea, too is that once you put your fabric up top, you can put like plants in the top and they'll do very good. There's my outlet I was talking about to drain it. And I gotta get some outlets for that thing too. The reason why I put a rain barrel there is because the pond's here, I don't want it running right into the pond. So I can put a valve at the bottom for when I want to water the plants and I can put an overflow hole, which I did. I'll put an overflow valve there and I'll run it into the pond at the back. So if that fills up, it fills the pond. The overflow can go in the pond. Last year we didn't get a lot of rain, but you never know what's gonna happen this year. So that's where I am at the biological filter. Let me know if you wanna watch more of that. This weekend, I have the Mini X coming. So we'll be digging a hole this weekend. I've got my fabric, I've got my liner. I'm just gonna use all this kind of rock. I'm gonna build a price efficient pond. I'm not gonna spend a pile of money on this pond. That's my goal. I got a 15 by 15 liner. I want it bigger, but it's $2,200 for a 30 by 30. <sighs> Mosquitoes are out. And I got this liner off of Marketplace last year for 100 bucks, 15 by 15. And it's the good shit. Like the, what is it, five mil? It's thick. I went out to DeGroote's to give them some of my money. And sorry if you're from around here, where they have a nursery that I always use throughout my building pond days back when I was a little younger. I should have done YouTube when I was younger. I did a lot more shit than I do now. But anyways, I built about seven ponds now. Back in my days, I used to use DeGroote Nursery. Now that I'm out in Wyoming, I go to the Sipkins once in a while, which is another nursery more towards me. So I went in there for some liner underlay, which is to stop rocks from protruding through the liner. It's like a, fa a really dense fabric that goes down first. I went in there for a price on that. For 15 by 15, they want $180 for it. So I said, ah, okay, thanks for letting me know. I'll, I'll figure that out. Stopped in Sipkins for the shits and giggles. They wanted $76. So DeGroots, if you want to price gouge people, I won't be sending people your way. That's for damn sure. Sipkins, you have a new customer and I'm probably a lifer because I see you got all sorts of friggin' pawn stuff there. So that's kind of nice to see. But 
what my plans are in this pond. I do have a plan for this pond. My plan for the pond is to bust my friggin' doodad. My plans for my pond is to, how do you like my suspender today? They're for work, don't tease me. I'm getting old now. My plans are for work. My plans are for the pond is to sell these fucking fish. I went into Sipkins and for a fish this big, you're about $120. Last year I bought my fish, they're about this big. And now they're, you know how big. I'll show you in case you forgot. They're about that big. They're hundred and about $50 fish right there. So if I do that once a year and sell 10 fish, that's a lot of cash. That adds up pretty quick. Speaking of fish, I should feed them. I haven't fed them today. That's how you get big fish. You feed the shit out of them. Ready for this? Oh, dick. Here we go, Captain. Oh, they're hungry, Jim. They're always hungry. Those ones are sucking on nothing. You guys are in the wrong spot over there. Get over here. The big bass is gonna have, there you go, you found it. Great. Fish are starving, Captain. But anyways, there's an update on what's going on over here. So we'll have a few more videos to come now, especially on the weekend with the excavator. I gotta record some of that for sure. Cause I don't know what I'm doing. I never know what I'm doing. You guys know that. Anyways, thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you on the next one.